My gosh, I mean, let's give credit to WWE. The shows at the moment are incredibly interesting, but good grief, is it like a roller coaster of emotions. However, you are tuned in to Ups and Downs for Raw here on What Culture with me, Simon Miller, where we're gonna run through the show and the good bits get that up, and the bad bit gets it down, and it all comes down with the Miller Hammer of Doom. Let's do it. Now we're going to keep doing what we did with the Survivor Series ups and downs. If you don't know what that is, you should go back and watch the Survivor Series ups and down video. But the opening to Raw was just so weird and so back and forth. We can't just give it a simple up or give it a simple down. We need to go through it bit by bit and give individual ups, individual downs. And we start with a down because I cannot believe anybody in 2017 wants to see Stephanie McMahon and Triple H walk down to the ring at the start of Raw and just run everybody down. It's like it's 2014 again, or any other year from like the last 15 years. It's too much, and sure, it did work at a time, and that's okay, but let's move forward. Let's come up with new ideas. Let's come up with new concepts. And this got even more ridiculous because while Kurt Angle did eventually come out to address everything that Triple H had done at Survivor Series, that was just an opening for Stephanie McMahon to run him down like she does with everyone. Now Kurt Angle looks like an absolute joke. And then Jason Jordan arrived and absolutely nobody cared and he challenged Triple H to a match as well. And at this point I was just like, what am I even watching? However, it was all saved because of what happened next. Steph would stood there all like, Triple H, the game, the king of kings, he ain't scared of nobody. And then Braun Strowman's music hit, the crowd went nuts and Triple H definitely looked scared. That was an up. And this was really awesome because it helped Braun Strowman take a step forward because he felt like a massive deal here, and that's what we want. Let's keep evolving and let's keep progressing Braun Strowman. Unless, of course, this ends with a pedigree and Triple H beating Braun Strowman 1-2-3. Eventually, everybody left the ring after Stephanie McMahon decided that Jason Jordan would, in fact, take on Braun. And Triple H stared at Braun Strowman the whole time. And don't forget as well, this does mean that Triple H is feuding with three people. Yep. Once all that nonsense was out of the way, we did get a Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe match. It's getting an up. Of course it's getting an up. These two are just very good wrestlers. The two just kicked the shenozzles out of each other. And even right away, like the first second of the match, Samoa Joe just ran over to Finn Balor and stiffed him so hard in the face, I made a noise. I went like, Bleh. And this did continue with some great back and forth action, with the finish coming when Samoa Joe locked on the Kikita clutch and Finn Balor just passed out. So we didn't tap. He didn't submit, he, like, he couldn't breathe anymore, so his eyes went like that, and the ref had to call the match off. Now here's the issue, is that a good thing, or is that a bad thing? And for my money, while it is a bit strange that WWE does seem a bit insistent to just run Finn Balor into the ground, it did make him feel sympathetic, right? It made him feel like a, like a lovable baby face, because he didn't want to give up. I'm not saying it was like Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13, but it was that same deal, and I kind of get the feeling the whole point of Finn Balor now is he's rubbish as Finn Balor, but when he becomes the demon, He's really good, and that's not going to work in the long run. Because if it goes lose, 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 win as a demon, lose, 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 win as a demon, eventually that's going to suck. But I didn't mind this. I think I probably should have done, but I didn't. That's why I got it up. Next, Gallows and Anderson did an advert for the WWE shop because it's coming up to Black Friday. Seriously, that's what they did. They may as well have been Doc Hendricks from the late 90s. Now, why on earth were using two talented wrestlers to do this and they did nothing else on the show? I do not know. However, we did see a pretty good Stone Cold Steve Austin impression, but apart from that, nonsense. Down. We then flew backstage for a segment between Jason Jordan and Kurt Angle. That's getting a down too. The long and the short of it was this. Jason Jordan went to Fake Dad and said, listen, Fake Dad, I don't actually want to fight Braun Strowman because I'm not 100%. And then Fake Dad said to Fake Son, but you said in the ring, you were 100%. And then Fake Son said to Fake Dad, I only said that because Triple H was there. And I sat there going, what? Then for some reason, Jordan just did a complete 180 and went, oh, okay, Daddy Boy Jim, I will go out there and fight Braun Strowman. And you know what? I'm going to beat him as well. I have absolutely no idea what the point of this was. It certainly does seem like Jason Jordan's going to turn heel and he's probably going to align himself with Triple H. And when that does happen, I imagine in hindsight, all of this stuff will be okay. But in terms of on the night, this was, well, it was weird, to be honest. It was really weird, hence the down. Oscar followed this up by whooping Dana Brooks' ass in about two minutes. And of course, that gets it up. There wasn't that much here to talk about. And I'm a bit worried because the crowd was a little bit lukewarm towards her. However, let's not worry about that. This is WWE using Oscar in the right way. And I got everything crossed that come like by WrestleMania, let's say. By WrestleMania, she's going to feel like a massive deal. And that will make me pleased in my heart. 
As a quick aside, I do want to say we don't need a Miz TV every single week on Raw because it becomes like diminishing returns. The more I see it, the more I don't want to see it. But with that said, I did enjoy last night's Miz TV. Get to know. The abridged version is thus. The Miz came out, he ran down Baron Corbin, even though he lost to Baron Corbin, and we moved on from that so fast if you thought that match didn't matter to begin with, now it definitely didn't matter because the Miz was like, oh, I don't care, I'm still IC champion. Eventually, he did call out his guest for the evening, which was Roman Reigns, and he took his time and eventually he came out with the entire shield. And the Miz got mad because he was like, you're not meant to be here with your buddies, it's just meant to be you. And the Miz then said, you know what, I'll tell you what else, it's because of me that the shield got back together, so you should all say thank you. They didn't, but the Houston crowd did. And I really enjoyed that. They all thanked The Miz, and I thank The Miz too. Rollins and Ambrose then declared that they were going to win the Raw Tag Team titles back eventually. And Roman was like, well, if you're going to have a title, I need a title too. Miz, let's have a match for the IC Championship this evening. You know where this is going to go. It ended with The Miz Taraj getting beaten up again because they are just cannon fodder at this point. Why we ever did anything with them, I don't know. The Shield triple power bombed and did whatever. And yeah, the main event is going to be Roman Reigns versus The Miz for the IC Championship, but we'll get to that later. We kept the Shield vibes alive as well as Ambrose took on Sheamus. This was fine, it was okay, gets it up. However, we do need to do something about this soon because we cannot keep having these two teams feuding until the rest of time. I mean, how many singles matches have we seen between Rollins, Ambrose, Cesaro, Sheamus, and the mixture of the four, whatever that can be, and it's all good, and it's all fine because they're all talented wrestlers, but soon, soon, pick a champion, move them on to somewhere else. Naturally, Rollins and Cesaro did stick their roar in here at some points, but it did end with the dirty deeds. One, two, three, Ambrose is your winner. Okay, strap yourself in because it is time for some madness, or in this sense, the women's segment this week on Raw. And it's all pretty good, to be honest. It's that when Alexa Bliss came out, and once again, like the Miz earlier, she just fobbed off the fact that she lost to Charlotte. We can't worry about that anymore because Raw and SmackDown won't be feuding by next week. And that led to Mickie James coming out and saying, look, let's not worry about that. I want a title shot. By the way, I think Mickey James is just great. She's just great. She's so much fun. She comes out there. She's all skippy and she's good on the mic. Big Mickey James fan. And then Bailey arrived and Alicia Fox arrived and Sasha Banks arrived. And as usual, everyone was like, I want to be number one contender. No, me, 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 me. So Angle arrived and said, well, let's have a big match for the number one contendership. And I sat there going, my gosh, we've seen this a lot. Thankfully, though, everything here was justified as an up because then Paige returned. She got a massive pop from the crowd. She got on the mic and she's like, I'm back, baby. Didn't say baby, I added that in. However, it was really good, and the best wasn't even here yet. But because she hadn't come by herself, she had come with two friends from NXT, and that was Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. They ran rough shot over everybody, they left the number one contendership open, and the crowd did seem to know who Mandy and Sonya were. I mean, there was a big NXT chart at one point, so you have to assume they knew what was going on. It was a great return for Paige, it was a great debut for these two, and as a trio, they are pretty damn awesome. And then we cut backstage, and Alexa Bliss teased that she was part of this, and they just whipped her ass too. So here's your new badass group in the women's division. Made it feel quite fresh. I'm excited. And then we got to Jason Jordan versus Braun Strowman. Now, I was all ready to give this a down, but I actually took a step back when I was watching. I was like, I actually think this is quite fun. So it's getting it up. I just really enjoy seeing Braun Strowman chuck people around, and that's what he did here. And there was a really cool spot as well where Jason Jordan being all like, I'm the man, I can do this. He tried to pick up Braun Strowman and then he re-injured his knee. Well, I got a feeling it's gonna turn out to be a fake knee injury, but that's not the point. For the very short time they were in the ring, I thought this was all right. And then yes, it was blatantly obvious that Kane was gonna come back because earlier in the night, Michael Cole had basically gone, hmm, Kane, Braun Strowman. Do you remember when Kane attacked Braun Strowman? Ooh, Kane, Kane and Braun Strowman. We get it, Michael, we get it called foreshadowing, you did too much. But the big red machine did return and he went absolutely crazy on Braun with a chair. And at one point he took it, they slammed it into his throat and then Stroman was all like, oh man, I can't breathe. I'm going to die. We didn't do that. We didn't do that last bit. That's kind of what we were meant to think. And he refused medical attention and he ran to the back, unable to breathe. You can't breathe. You die. And I don't mind the Kane Braun Strowman program because Strowman will win that. That's good. That's a good win. So I enjoyed all of this. Can't quite believe it. It is another down though because then we got to 205 live time and why do I even care anymore? And talk about missing the moment as well because the point here was to basically introduce us to two teams that are now in the cruiserweight division. We've got the heels or the Zo train or whatever the hell Enzo's calling them. And then we've got the good guys. And if we're doing that, we just had a pay-per-view called Survivor Series. Why couldn't we have a Survivor Series match with the Cruiserweight dudes? 
Would have been better than Enzo versus Callisto. Anyway, then the good guys did have a big four on four match with the bad guys, and it was fine, it was entertaining, but you could have heard a pin drop in the crowd, the amount people cared, and you can just feel that WWE couldn't give two hoots about this. So it is a down just because it is falling flat. I do think WWE's trying to a certain extent, and that makes me a hypocrite from what I just said, but something is missing here, something needs to be done. Then we got two backstage segments that kind of just existed. It did turn out that Braun Strowman didn't want any health care and he just wandered off into the night, and then The Miz was begging with Kurt Angle, please don't make me face Roman Reigns, please, please but he's still facing him. And then we did pop to the ring to see Elias about to sing a song and Matt Hardy interrupted and Elias just bailed. None of this gets an up, none of this gets a down, it was just filler, what ifs. And then it was main event time and yeah, you already know what's gonna happen, you already know what I'm gonna say, however the controversy here is I'm giving it an up. Now yeah, don't get mad, I am giving it up for Roman Reigns winning the IC title, but here's the thing. Here is the thing. Firstly, the crowd didn't boo Roman Reigns here, and they actually seemed quite into him, and I just love that in 2017. I'm so bored of the guy that's meant to be the face of the company, or the ultimate good guy, getting booed. We saw it for so long with John Cena, when the plan actually works, it makes me feel nice inside. Also, these two did have a really good match, and yeah, 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 we saw run-ins from The Bar, we saw run-ins from Rollins and Ambrose, but when all was said and done, this was entertaining, this was enjoyable, and seeing the IC title change hands on Raw, well, kind of felt good. And of course it is ridiculous that WWE have now put another title on Roman Reigns and already made him a Grand Slam champion, but if they're going to do that, I'd rather than do it like this. If the belt is on Roman Reigns, maybe finally the Intercontinental Championship will start to feel important again. That wasn't the Miz's fault, that wasn't the Miz's fault at all, but sometimes it wasn't even mentioned. They won't do that with Reigns because it's Roman flipping Reigns, so that's why it gets an up, because maybe, just maybe, this helps everybody out. And also, if the Shield then do go on to win the tag team titles, that is pretty good. Ambrose, Rollins tag champions, Roman IC champion, it makes them a really cool and a really powerful faction, and surely that's the point of bringing them back. I can't hate this, and I'm sorry. So yeah, while Raw did have some moments that made me want to shoot myself in the face, it also had some stuff that I really enjoyed, and once again, I thought for a three hour show, they did a pretty good job. All we got to do is get through December, and then it's WrestleMania season, and everything's going to be jolly. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about Raw. Like, share, and subscribe. Head on over to whatculture.com and read some articles about Raw. Go on over to Twitter, follow WhatCulture at WhatCultureWWE. My name is Simon from WhatCulture, or how I'm renaming myself Mr. Ups and Downs. And that actually works. If I do it on the ups and downs, it's like RVD. Please don't sue me, RVD. It's like... I'm doing it with love towards you, with love. I love you, RVD. That's a weird tangent. Let's end the video, but thank you for watching. So, thanks for watching. Please feel free to click on any of these things around my head, or something terrible might happen to the dog. Too sweet me, bro. Traitor. <laughs> Traitor. <laughs> <laughs>